Ladies and gentlemen, for the second and potentially the final map of this event, we'll see how Renegades do, if they can bring this all the way to the third on Cobblestone. We're here anyway. Renegades CT side. We've got a Deagle on Nifty. Very rare on the CT side. Usually you get that Deagle on T side for the range, but USPs obviously show that on CT, so surprised to see that, but either way, no kit, no smoke for that retake on the B site that is so common on pistol rounds, but Cloud9 setting up with a bit of utility on Tarek as well. We've got Glocks and armor on everyone else and a lone P250. It's Cloud9, they set up a default early on, wait to see if Renegades throw in any aggression. Yeah, very spread map right now is Cloud9 oh. looking to commit to nothing, but JKS looking to take a forward angle over here at upper inner just gets blasted. Only 17 HP, Stewie chases him off and looks like they're going to start setting up here above ladder so it looks like they still might do an outer execute they have a smoke for z connector a couple of flashes they chase inner off so they don't have to worry about a flank and they may have pulled the inner rotation in their minds which Ooh. it is true that they do have naf over there as well so that might even lighten up an outer defense if they so choose to transition but now they might be thinking about going inner instead yeah, knowing that they have a player weakened there Still two players on defense, though. JKS is still here despite being low, and while the smoke will land in his position, the flash will also bind Naf, so he can't even defend. JKS finished off by Rush, and Naf, he needs to get a kill. They're already close by him. He doesn't even seem to realize they've rushed up so aggressively. Look at Stewie's position. It's perfect, and they won't be ready. He gets a kill, and so will pretty much everyone else left on Cloud9. Only Skadoodle yet to mop up a frag as everyone on Renegades <laughs> are dead, and Nifty, he's stuck in the connector with a Deagle. Not the best gun for this retake, I've got to say, but he's going to give it a shot. Automatic tag. He's chipping away, but it's frankly not enough. He's yet to even find a frag into this round, and this looks to be over. It's automatic with two, and Cloud9 on the board. Yeah, again, I like that type of tactic from Cloud9. I mean, they're basically getting the most out of a Glock, which is getting in someone's face, using the, the kind of the, the buff it got recently uh, to be able to, to capitalize on close-range battles against USPs that are obviously favoring distance. I mean, not only are they flashing their way in, they're putting a smoke Z, but they're moving forward over there towards Connector. They're not shying away and stepping back and planting and playing into inner Halls. They're looking to get in the face of Connector and, and not give Renegades breathing room on that retake. And you may see that in gun rounds as well. As Cloud9 love the aggressive executes on both sides of the map. So C9 taking the 1-0 lead. Naf looking to get aggressive here at Ivy with the 5-7. Don't see a 5-7 often these days. No, very rare. Especially on CT, right? Tech 9, well, I wouldn't even, no, don't see Tech 9 just because it's bad. But like, you'd expect to see more CZs on the CT side just due to you being able to control the range of engagement mm -hmm. more so than the terrorist half. But yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a Tech 9. I can completely forgot that gun existed. Yeah. I mean, the thing was, it got really good at tapping, but it's just a CZ is so powerful. Yeah. I think people got reminded, like, when the Tech 9 got nerfed, just, and so, same with the 5.7, just how powerful these things were, and now they've really come back to the forefront of these situations, as Cloud9 already do have a man advantage in this round, as NAF's been cleared out. Still be looking to farm with the Max and at Ivy, but a lot of focus actually in inner halls right now. As Stewie may just sneak through back calls, oh. and this can make things interesting. Yeah, he can just split into B. They don't even need to make a push now. They have so much time, they can just wait for Stewie to make the play. They hold the flank, and you still are caught out on the ladder. Somehow gets away with his life, but not much else. And you can see they still haven't committed towards B because it's just Stewie clearing it out. He can check the connector, he can check the site, get that frag, and as soon as he does, they'll just push in. He hears a rotation, gives away his position, oh, but he no. goes down. The 5-7, apparently the best gun in the game by Nifty as he finds a kill. And JKS could even stop the bomb plant, but he gets dropped. As so does Automatic, goes down to 3 HP. Nifty can't clean up the kill and upgrades now to that Mac 10 taking off the body of Stewie. Still, this round should not be even close as Cloud9 continues to clean up with the rifles. But that flank from Stewie... Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're kind of hoping for that satisfying ending to Stewie's yeah. flank where he was able to kind of come in and just find a couple of kills. But as Thorin told us, computers don't care. <laughs> don't care about your feelings and what story you want. So Cloud9 wanted to win the round anyway. So honestly, you still got the ending yeah. you wanted if you're a Cloud9 fan. It just didn't happen the way that you thought it would. Um, but 2-0 uh, now for C9. We have Renegades on a full USP save. So this should be... You know, pretty easy for C9 to just waltz into a third round, you'd have to imagine. Yeah, I'm throwing it in the A stack. This is fine for Renegades again, just taking that risk. If it's B, it's no issue. They're only on USPs. If it's A, they might have a chance of trading down to a couple of players and getting some kills. But yeah, Cloud9 just running rampant over the site. It's not an issue for them at all to dispatch of these Aussies and a couple of North Americans as well. All onto Naf. And yeah, he's dead too. So nice round from Cloud9. They take it cleanly. And we're going forward. We're going to have a lot of money for this T side as well. Yeah, Nifty's Ops going to have to start shining here. Again, Cloud9's yeah. a team, just like you saw in Mirage, they like to 
kind of lean towards aggressive execute as opposed to playing default. They certainly can play a default on train. They have that uh, ability, as most teams do. But again, they, they like to be very aggressive. And it's been that way even going back to earlier iterations of Cloud9, particularly on the outer bomb site. So it's going to be Renegades having to prove that they can hold against that. Uh, it can be very difficult to deal with that much firepower just barreling towards you. But we'll see if they're up to the task as Cloud9 actually will take a slower approach this round. Just letting Stewie work control of inner halls usually with Tarek, and that is the case this time as well. Also starting to clear out ladder room. May even go for that uh, head boost fall down we've been seeing a lot lately to kind yeah. of control this. They do indeed, and it's clear. So Renegade's showing no aggressive positioning. They even have two inside of the connector. This is rare. As Rush begins to just burst on out, Nafly going to be the first man of defense, the first line of defense, and he gets one. Make it two as well. Good work up from the site, and Ustillo even follows up, dropping the bomb. Nifty misses a shot with the AWP, and that's not what you need if Skadoodle finds two, but he's now alone, left to find four if he wants to win the round. Listen, Skadoodle's really good at 1vx situations. I would not count him out here. It, he might get out-aimed, but he usually maneuvers very well. Oh, unfortunate timing there. I mean, nice position. He gets aggressive, right? They, they might not expect that kind of wrap through Ivy, but instead JKS hits the shot first and faster. So Renegades, at least they get that early round. This is something I was worried about coming into this map. It was very possible the Cloud9 would just run away in terms mm -hmm. of economy. And once you get that, that bull rolling with money and keep the CT's money low, if you can continue to buy up those orbs and not allow Renegades to get nifty on that AWP, this could fall apart for the Aussies. But no, they get one round on the board. They can start things off here and now. They just have to avoid the reset. I think it's good for their confidence that they proved in themselves they can stop a fast outer push from Cloud9 right away. You know, just naff great with the M4 there. I know they were talking in the hallway between games, and they, they, it was Azza actually the one that was talking, and he was just basically telling his guys, like, look, let's just refocus, forget that game. Like, let's, let's prove we can do this. And oh. look, Azza proven he can stop a ladder push right there, taking down Tarek and Stewie, the man himself I was referring to, leading by example from that team huddle. And now knowing B-Halls is clear, he even pushes up the ladder. So low HP, but he goes up towards B. So now Cloud9, it's going to be very clear they're still committing towards the A bomb site. So Renegades can pre-rotate players over. And look, they have everyone on this side of the map. And that, they have the bomb down. As Rush is alone, he's now been given away his position. I love the effect from of Renegades. After taking those two kills, they get aggressive and they get all the information. So Rush, he's about to be shot in the back as JKS begins to wrap. They need to be careful. They don't know that Rush is committed, they just know he's in the area, and there's a shot, gives it away. And Nafly, playing consistent as ever, two kills in that round, he's always putting up numbers for the team, even in dire situations. Yeah, it's good to see that. He is a star for this team, and he's definitely living up to it so far on this CT side. Azza also had a really big play in ladder there. It can be very hard for CTs to manage ladder room because uh, you can, you know, it, it can just get tricky with that new head boost thing, particularly. I mean, T's have certainly had to be crafty at ladder because before that you could hear grenade pin noises, and so CTs could always kind of have the the drop on yeah. you, so to speak. But now with that head boost thing, it kind of throws throws a wrench in things, and also you can use Molotovs to clear it out. But as it just, you know, holds tall and gets both kills, so really well done. And now they have Cloud9 on to a bit of a save here, so real good chance to tie this thing up. Oh, okay, <laughs> Stewie. Caught out trying to move down, doesn't expect Azza to repeat the same business, and that's the bomb dropped. So Renegades now have everything going for them, and they can rotate. Look at this. They push players close towards Pop because they know they can regain control. But Rush, an automatic, as they rush onto the site, they both find kills. And now this leads it into a bit more of a dangerous situation as gums are dropped in the open and Cloud9 can go and retrieve them. Tarek also has an, an armor behind this AK, so that makes him even more yeah. dangerous. This is, this is actually really good for Cloud9. They've retrieved the bomb, and look at this. Because Renegades have rotated players over with the presence show from Cloud9, this bomb can just walk into B. Well, Tarek doesn't know it's empty just yet. He'll be able to work it out sooner rather than later, and he does. It, uh, straight into the site and bomb down. Even if Cloud9 lose this round, they get a hell of a lot out of it. As two kills have already been found, uh, Tarek looking to make it three as he gets aggressive, and Skadoodle still pinning these players into the site, still being a distraction, forcing them to take the fight. Ra Tarek even wrapping into the connector. If he gets here before they Spot him. This is massive. This position could make the round happen. It's looking very, very difficult, but it seems like they expect it. As they begin to clear it out, he finds one, almost two, and Nathfly again steps up for the team with both kills. Time for the defuse. defuse. Renegades can find three. Indeed, they've tied this thing up, so they're, they're hanging around. They're fighting hard. They're not letting Cloud9 walk away with this after what was a brilliant first map from the Americans. Renegades... Starting to establish themselves on the CT side, starting to get their money in order. They're going to have plenty to work with in this next round as well. 
though. Yeah, like you noted, C9 did do some damage here. They did get a bomb plant, so they're increasing their funds going into their next buy round. Includes an op in Scott's hands, full utility, AKs across the board. Curious to see if Cloud9 want to go back to the fast-paced play, or if they want to slow things down and give Skadoodle a chance to kind of work this AWP and just kind of spread the map. It looks like Tarek is looking to go in her halls. As again, playing inside ladder. He's going to keep doing this until they stop him, you yeah. feel like. They need to pressure him. They need to throw down some utility into that position. Dropping down clearly isn't enough. And while we do have Nifty on the AWP, he's got aggressive towards B upper. That's something I'm looking towards, because Cloud9, while well, they're focused towards A with a bomb outside of Ivy, they mm -hmm. can always just send a player there to check. You know, we've got Tarek up in the hall, so he's got to be careful if he does. Run boost over for Cloud9 as they look to take control of this Ivy position. And it's just your standard A split here, coming in through a uh, three-pronged attack on the Cloud9 yeah. side. Yeah, triple Ivy set up here from Cloud9. Something else I'd like to throw out. Something you do see a lot of teams doing, actually, just being able to focus out and just kind of slide and let T kind of ladder come out a little bit later. And like you said, had that three-pronged attack with the focus on Ivy. As Tarek has a pot flash in, mm -hmm. baits out some bullets, knows he's there, gets out, at least doesn't take any damage. That's fair enough. But now that means Ivy has to make the play because he can't really yeah. get down there and help them. And still Cloud9 have the bomb here, so they have to commit towards A for the time being, unless they wrap in through CT spawn. They can't just, you know, double back and go into B halls, for example. So now Cloud9, with running out of options, running out of time, they're going to have to make the commitment. You still owe's here. And while they've done a good job of baiting out utility, there's still a lot of Renegades players in position. Nafly being one of them again, a massive 2k, maybe three, but no Stewie trades. And still the time's low. Cloud9 yet to commit, and you still owe. He's just playing for the bomb plant. He doesn't want to fight these Ivy guys. He wants to wait until they get close to the site. Because again, they only have 20 seconds, and Cloud9 holds fast. The Molotov is good. It keeps them at bay. And with four players moving into the site from Renegades, Cloud9 just going to look to save. Yeah, they have to. They don't really have a way in. They need to hold on to this AWP and AK because their money isn't that high. Saving this head armor, these guns, this utility, that would do wonders for them in the next round. And I mean, just Renegades are managing their CT side so well. They're not giving Cloud9 any space. They keep stalling them out, particularly Azza keeps stalling out Tarek at ladder. But meant that, that Ivy had to work. And that meant that Renegades, because Azza was playing the way he was, they could focus up on Ivy. They could pay more attention to it. They could give it the respect it needed. And they, you know, didn't allow them to get out of control. Yes, we got a couple of frags, but they never were able to get out into open space. So definitely seeing Renegades wake up a bit, starting to find their form. Yeah, that's something we were worried about coming into this map, right? Because again, you know, Cloud9, if they can decimate Renegades on Renegades' map pick, then what's going to happen when we move to Cloud9s, especially with the way they've been performing today up against Liquid? You know, while they had a bit of a shaky first map, it was the second where they stomped themselves and then moving on to Cobble a little closer, but they still looked very confident. And again, coming into this third, or sorry, final best of three for the event, Cloud9 are looking to take the trophy home to prove they are one of, or if not the best team in North America, or at least playing there. As Renegades are back on the buy, they've got the AWP up on Nifty, they've got the rifles in. Cloud9, similar story, but lackluster on automatic. This time we see the players go up towards B for Cloud9, but Renegades with only one man on defense. They throw the AWP, or I, IV AWP instead. So you, Nifty, not going not gonna to even be close here to stop Cloud9 committing towards the side of the map. It's going to be all on JKS. And while he has a molly to play contact down towards ramp, that's it. Well, that's the adjustment from C9. If you're having trouble getting ladder, and therefore having a key piece you need to do your ladder executes, and okay, let's just try something towards inner, or at least spin some utility, making sure Azra can't play into ladder, making sure we can get it for ourselves. As Tarek goes down and checks it a couple of times, knows that it's clear, but they want to focus inner, but JKS, he spotted... I think all three of these guys yeah, definitely spotted two. So he's able to dump some utility and kind of back off, and that's going to stall out Cloud9 once more. And the Cloud9s often found themselves stuck in late round situations. Renegade has done a great job of stopping them from having that fast paced play. What do Cloud9 want to do here? Sounds like they are going to be focusing up on inner halls, but NASA already rotated to help out JKS, and you still and Azure are both ladders, so they can both quickly flank. So this is going to be tough. Yeah, that's the most important part, right? We've got two players on that on that flank through Popdog. This is rare, so Cloud9 might be caught out, and no one's watching it right now. So while they can double back and hold it once the bomb's gone down, these players can get up the ladder, which is the hardest part for free. But into the site they go. Stewie, great double entry, exactly what Cloud9 need. And they're just going to take the bomb onto the site. Easy plant comes through. They're these players from Renegades aren't even going to touch around because they know that they're too far away. Nifty was deep down Ivy, and Ustilla was only sitting in the middle of the site. So it's a free round for Cloud9 just off the back of Stewie finding two. Yeah, I mean, Nifty just being too far away to really help them out. I think if the inner defense would have gone a little bit better, like you limit Stewie to just one kill, you trade, you give a chance for the ladder frank to actually set in, you give time for Nifty to pivot with the AWP, maybe they could have gone for that. Mm. But just how fast Stewie got two kills and the positions they were in, it just wasn't really feasible. And so C9 will tie this thing right back up. Great adjustment from them. 
to just go for something fast at enter, just kind of play to their strengths of being able to swarm and trade and and find like a vulnerable bomb site. And so that will get them right back onto the board after a bit of a losing streak. They also survive with all their players, right? So they don't have to spend any money. And that's a great for a team that's been on the losing streak to be able to kind of save some cash and hopefully start establishing their economy in this game. Yeah, it just means now reset is not possible for Renegades. And while they have a bit of money to buy back up, if they find their fifth here on the CT side, Cloud9, as you say, they have this cash to fall back on. So it's no issue at all for the... Uh, for the C9 guys, Renegades are going to have to find two in a row and keep a lot of players alive at that to kind of dissuade Cloud9 from forcing into the next round. So we'll see. Double AWP up here for Renegades. Nafly and Nifty as expected here. Flash down Ivy, but no commitment. So Cloud9 hold back themselves. Don't want to get rushed. We've got the same setup again for Renegades. You know, aggressive pop door control. This time Atta plays on the outside of it, so he knows that Renega uh, Cloud9 could put more pressure here. And, you know... Only one player towards B. It's okay for a short amount of time, but that, again, if Cloud9 show any presence towards this map, we need a pre-rotation. And yeah, they had Skadoodle trying to bring his op over towards Ivy, but there was a smoke up. Couldn't really find anything, so just backs off and leaves Rush there instead. So the rest are just kind of sitting towards inner halls, just making sure no one can be playing aggressively upper, just making sure they have brown halls at their disposal. Making sure that no flanks can come in, no information can be gained from Renegades. And they will start gathering up again for an Execute, perhaps. But they can also go for the Molly play and Ladder again, the, the play that Gabi came up with to try to clear him out and leave Upper, excuse me, Outer as an option. Not quite sure just yet. Still a good amount of time left on the clock to figure that out. Worth noting the Outer rotation is going to be a bit strained, but they already have two in Inner. Yeah, and that's nifty as well. That's a key part of this defense. We've got an AWP in play. Usually yep. he's been left to have to retake or just save. So now him being in the site, able to stop the bomb from going down, this is good. And Cloud9 are limited in time, 30 seconds. He's poised perfectly. They're about to walk in and nifty, taking an easy shot. First kill through. JKS as well on the site, and he already rotation's coming in. JKS does his job, and he falls back off the back of that as well. As Cloud9 look for more, they get nothing. Door slammed in the face, and Skadoodle left to save, but the flank's already coming out. They do not want him to hold on to that. That AWP and they will not as it takes it down and C9 lose the round. Indeed, they do well managed by Renegades in inner again. Nifty just kind of getting a freebie and then Jackass responding well to the lower ramp push. I think Cloud9 need to sync up a little bit better on the inner execute. They just kind of gave 1v1s away. I mean, I guess they couldn't necessarily know there would be an op upper. Mm. They were maybe hoping just to jiggle peek it, bait out a shot, and get the information and then just be able to kind of back down and refocus. But the player getting caught. And they were starting to run a little bit low on time. They decided to commit, but just well managed by Renegades. Once more, they get a fifth round. But again, C9, they had some money saved up, so they can still buy here. Don't have as much utility at their fingertips, but still a reasonable buy to work with as once more just trying to get some of that inner halls control. But I feel like it's definitely going to be an outer split this time. But can they get as out of ladder room? That's going to be the big question. As NAF has that double lot set up in effect now as well, so that could certainly throw a curveball at C9. Oh, anti-flash for Azza. They fall in together, but this time he's not as lucky as previously. Nafly has to pick up the pieces of this round as he's into a 4-on-4. Four four. He gets a tag, but not the player he was looking for. Stewie, another nice entry. You always look to him to do it, but it's a spray through the smoke from JKS at range. And now Cloud9 down to two again. Renegade's back in the man advantage. A good situation to be in, but Skadoodle climbing up the ladder will catch out Nifty, who's tunnel scope into the site. There's now two are left, but two are gone. And Renegades, they will get away with it. You still owe cleaning up the pieces. Won't be able to save the AWP of one of the two remaining AWPers for Renegades, but it's at least a round. And with that, of course, we talked about Cloud9 having the economy off the back of saving five in the one buy round they did get. But the reset coming in two rounds later. So now they're down to $1,900. And while they have a little more loss bonus to play with, they're still going to have to throw in one single yeah. eco before next round. Yeah, really well done again by Renegades. They're defending really well just across the board. They're not allowing Cloud9 any type of consistent success. Nothing they've been able to throw at them and something they feel they can hold on to and use again. Renegades have been a step ahead in that regard. Even though Azo went down for free in ladder room that time, which is a little bit scary when you're committing to playing aggressively there, you want something out of it. You saw a good response from the rest of the team. Naf, you know, putting that op to work up close, getting a kill. JKS in the rotation, finding a couple. Just, you know, Renegades making sure they're staying ahead right now against C9. They've had the lead for a little bit now, and they're still holding on to it. And now C9 do have to take a full save. Just glocks across the board. So yeah. this should be a fast and easy one here for the majority Aussie lineup. Yeah, there's no reason for Cloud9 to invest again. You know, Maybe a flashbang on one of the players on 25, 2600, but other than that, there's no real necessity. 
This isn't a round they can win. Best case scenario, I'd say like a bomb plant, right? But we've been seeing JKS down towards B, being good with at least the delay with a Molotov, just playing spot. Not actually trying to commit, although he falls back a little bit this time. It's Azza to do the work again in pop. What is that? Azza just tapping away. Ridiculous. It's only anti-eco, but it's so clean. Four frags in that round. Renegades up to seven. They're looking like a very different team to that of Mirage, where they got decimated by Cloud9. Now moving forward to the opposition's map pick, putting up numbers. Yeah, just to kind of throw a little bit of extra information in there, the bulk of the wins that Claw9 have offline on train, including the obvious win over Renegades at DreamHack Denver, they didn't allow their opponent past like five or six rounds the majority of the time. And a lot of those games, just kind of, you know, thinking about them, a lot of the times they had really big CT sides when they had 14 against Renegades at Denver in the first half from CT. They had like a 12 or 13 against Big, I think, on CT as well in the final. So they are known for big CT sides. So Renegades, you know, they're doing great. They're not out of the water just yet, but at least they're piecing things together and giving themselves a good amount of space as they do get an exchange here in inner halls. Yeah, Sui jumps over Nifty there and will only get away with one kill, but surprised he even got that far. Nifty allowed him to get a lot of control towards upper, and that will be annoying for JKS to go down. Imagine not too happy with that exchange, but still, 4v4, not the end of the world for Renegades. They're still up into this round, and while we don't have an open play for either team, rifles across the board, both teams equipped well, and Cloud9 rerouting, they're taking Ivy, and with the setup of Renegades, this is easy to exploit for this T side. They can just run right up. Look, they're not even playing passive or slow on this. They're just going aggressively up towards the CT spawn, able to wrap into B, and I'll be interested to see if they actually go for that option as well, because Tarak is up in the halls with automatic, oh, no. so they re realistically could, whereas Renegades, they have no information on the whereabouts. They have to take a fight, and they will. Nafly this time not able to put up the numbers, and the A site's been open like a can of worms. You still as the only man left to commit to it. We have Pop Dog, but they still have Tarek up in the halls to try and drop down and take him down. Nifty has to go and support Azza, and the bomb dropped, but 30 seconds left. You still giving away his position, has players from all angles, but he's putting up two and three. You still owe, he makes this round happen for Renegades. And while it's not over just yet, the time is certainly seeming to be close. Tarek has to make things happen, but you still owe four kills in that round. It looked over for Renegades, but it's a solo man on the bomb site to make it all happen. What a big individual effort there from you still. Like you said, it was a nightmare right there for Renegades. I mean, you're basically not actively playing Ivy at all, and you have no tabs on back halls because no one's been able to make a rotation to kind of keep a tab back there. So you're basically, your only out is to have someone on bomb train being able to stop them, but you have to also worry about T-Con, have to worry about ladder. It's, it just can just be so chaotic to deal with all of that. Yet you still have steps up to the plate, delivers a quad kill round, and saves the day for Renegades, and holds Cloud9 off once more and gets them back onto another situation where they only have upgraded pistols to play with. So they're starting to roll out a big CT side here. Oh, okay. Automatic, just given a free kill. Nifty. That's not the first time he's been caught out by a player pushing out of main. And while Automatic will go no further, it's a gun drop that never should have happened. Cloud9, still only one on player oh. up. But Tarek, he's repeating the efforts of Automatic. This team has so many strong Deagle players. And Tarek looking to do more. Caught on the ladder, not going to be able to find it. But Sui instead steps up, oh and my. somehow they take the round. Oh my I have, goodness. I, I have no idea. I if you're lie. Renegades, that has, to, that has to be a tough pill to swallow. You've been playing such a great CT side. Then you lose to something like that. There's a bunch of Deagles going out, taking a bunch. Of, that was literally a rank S strat. Yeah, like, there, there's really no other way to describe that. Cheese, it's just, cheese, cheese. we have a lot of good aimers. Let's give them Deagles. That's all we can afford. Let's see what we can do. And they just happen to pop off. So, unfortunate one there for Renegades. But a big round for C9. Again, they're known for big CT side. So, if they can at least get themselves within striking distance from their T side, they're setting themselves up nicely to close this series out in two still. Some silly rounds back and forth, but still Renegades leading for the most part. I'd say the scoreline's pretty equal. Uh, you know, if anything, favorable for Renegades considering the way the previous map went. They've already put up more rounds and we're only 14 in. Right. That being said, they are on the easier half or the more favored, so they should definitely be yeah. up in the You favor. just got to be kicking yourself as well as you've played other rounds to lose to that one yeah. of all rounds. Like no th that's well. the one that you hate to see but hopefully they'll be able to just keep their composure, shake it off and focus up because they're still playing a good half overall. Clearly have the resilience, judging by the fact that they're doing well on this map after getting stomped on their pick. But let's see if that carries on into this buy because this will, this will cement who has the money for the last round of the half. That's the most important part. Neither team has a lot of cash to fall back yep. on. The most has Cloud9, they have a couple of thousand on a few of the players. Four on two, but it doesn't really matter. Not a huge amount. So Cloud9 are a little more safe, but Renegades, they've got nothing to fall back on. So this is a must-win round for the Aussies. 
And this time they even give up pop door control. But Azza looks to get aggressive in other areas of the map, punishing automatic. Flash doesn't work, but the kill certainly does. However, he can't find the gun, has to take back his famous. It's stuck under the train. And Cloud9 flash him as well. Players in pop dog, but they don't punish him on the exit. Skadoodle gonna look to do that through main. There's two players there, rush supporting. And Nafli can't ca catch the cross as well. Cloud9, they look to make their way onto the bomb site, but the time is gonna be the biggest issue. 20 seconds. They've been leaving a lot of these rounds too late. And while it hasn't come back to punish them, this time it most certainly will. They're forced to make an effort. An effort they shall. It looks good, but still time, 14 seconds left. And with still, you still owe in the site. He could stop this round completely. He wraps around the right side, and that's a bomb drop. That should be the round over. It is. You still owe both kills. No plant. Cloud9 struggle for money. Yeah, the Aussie duo of As and you still have been playing such great Counter-Strike yeah. on the outer yard. Whether it be As of being forward, like he's done on ladder a couple of occasions, he's done pretty well with that round. He gets a pick playing up close on T-Con, slows down Cloud9. He also is worth noting, throughout this half, there's been so many times that you know, Renegade has stalled out Cloud9. It's not like Cloud9 have just waited patiently. They're playing, you know, towards the end of the clock. They're normally a fast-paced team. No, it's Renegade's forcing them to slow down. It's Renegade's not giving them, you know, the opening that they want to be able to start rolling out and getting an execute going. So it's really been, you know, Renegade's willing it to happen this way, not an open mistake from Cloud9. So props to the Aussies there because... Ustello and Azza have been so on point. Ustello's had a couple of big plays. He's obviously had the one we just watched, but he also had a big quad kill around not too long ago to defend a round that was quite scary. I mean, I mean if you think about it, the only round that Cloud9 have won recently was that Deagle round. So every other round throughout the bulk of this half has really just been when it gets clamping down. Remember, three of the, the five rounds that seen on half come off of winning Pistol. That's a very good point. This is an issue we saw exactly with Optic earlier on as, as well. You know, they, they took Pistol, they took Conversions, and then they took the first buy where Renegades had weak money. And from then on, you know, it was two rifle rounds and they both got reset as is in the same situation here. Reset isn't as bad. So Cloud9 can put money in and obviously they have to. It's last round, but this is a weird buy. Double AWP, 1AK, CZ, Deagle. They're just, again, rank S, right? It worked earlier. Well, I mean, the double, double op on T side can work. I know Cold and Fallen were pretty famous for on this map from SK. Uh, this is exactly where you put the second op as well. You look for any type of inner halls aggression while the other kind of scopes out T-Con. You can also obviously put one up at Ivy. Um, but yeah, it could come back to haunt you if you're not finding opening picks. You actually have to start executing onto a bomb site and you're trying to swarm and trade. If you have one of those ops, that's somebody that has to kind of sit back a little bit more. And you only have a couple of pistols and an AK to really do a take. So. It can definitely have its pros and cons, but they have the opening kill on this round. Nifty's already out. Naf has that second off, though. Or he may have just picked up Nifty's. I'm not sure, but either way, he has a scoped weapon to help patrol around and rotate back and forth between these two sites. And as Cloud9, no commitment yet. They're just kind of sitting back with their advantage and waiting things out. Tarek is just, he's teasing Azza right now. Baiting hard. Fate flash in, and Azza gets the kill. It doesn't even matter, <laughs> two frags! Both oh through the boy. wall, both to the head. Cloud9, they drop dead. It's 9-5, but looking to be 10 as Renegades. They take great control this round, but talking of control, they've given up A. Hey, they may have both players in the pop dog, but look at Cloud9, they've worked their way down Olaf. And while the bomb hasn't made its way out of main, you still are keeping that one on lockdown. These players might actually be able to catch up maybe the barrel of the gun with the player looking through pop. We need to see that bomb make its way because Skadoodle's in an awkward spot. Luckily, the smoke comes through, and this is where Renegades realize their mistake. Although they're set up perfectly for the retake on this round, they allow Cloud9 so much map control. So a 4 and 3 retake going to have to happen. Doesn't matter about money here. Renegades just need to move in and win it. Cloud9 just getting into post plants. No utility left. Renegades have a few flashbangs and full kit, so at least something to play with. And Cloud9. It's a game of wit, it's a game of timing. Renegade's certainly playing slow. First player spotted, uh, tag with the AWP as well. Skadoodle doing damage, but it's a wrap from Nafly. He needs to quick things up. But automatic with the Deagle, again showing Cloud9 have the power. Gonna be traded by Ustillo. Still two up, but listen to the bomb. The time's so low. They need to jump on it, and Skadoodle needs to stop them. Rush finds a kill. This round is over, and Cloud9, somehow they do it. It's actually just crazy that two of the rounds that Cloud9 went of the six, you know, outside the three they won from Pistol, comes from crazy things like that. A deagle round, this round, where you're scraping the bottom of the barrel to put something together, but they still get a six round nonetheless. And that comes off the back of Azza again patrolling ladder room so well. Their ladder room management by Cloud9 was, was not really good on this T side. Right. Azza got a couple of double kills from that position, but somehow, some way, they managed to kind of outmaneuver Renegades in that round and come up with the clutch in the end thanks to Ska and Rush, I believe it was. And what was a, was it a 2v4 or 2v3? 2v4. Okay. So 
Yeah, I mean, Renegades have to be shaking their head because they probably think they should be winning this half 11-4 uh, based on that deke around and what we just witnessed. So yeah. they, they would like a little bit more out of it because the scary thing is C9 have oftentimes been capable of putting out double digits on their own CT side of this map. Remember, it was 14 CT rounds that beat Renegades at DreamHack Denver from Cloud9 on this very map. So it, you're not out of the woods if you're Renegades. Yeah, you got nine rounds in your T side, you know, your CT side. Well done, sure, but they probably wanted a bit more out of that. Yeah, again, like we looked at that Deagle round with Cloud9 just bursting out and, and getting all those kills. You know, Stu, I think, with a 3K Deagle. You know, stuff like that. It, it just gives an extra bit of momentum to Cloud9. And not only that, but it gave them more money, right? Mm -hmm. They want an eco. So therefore, when we went into that last round, the reason they were actually able to afford after getting shut down in the previous with a reset is because they want an eco three rounds prior. You know, these things add up. It gave them the money to go for the double AWP, which eventually won it for yep. them. So, you know, Cloud9, they win one Deagle round. It gets them essentially two rounds because of the buy. But we're into the second half. And Renegades, they have a lot of utility. What do you expect? Hmm. Maybe they're just going to do like the typical smokes at Ivy to come out with Glocks with a couple of flashes to pour into Outer Yard. They have, mm -hmm. what is it, two of the flashes in the smoke is from Nifty, actually from Tcon area. So, and they have one smoke on Nath, who's oh, Ivy. No. So, they, yeah, they're going to try to smoke off Ivy and try to come through Outer. But Rush is holding firm with this USP right now. They've out-traded at Ivy so far. Even with a smoke in, Rush going to look to still find the kill. Flashed. And so he'll fall back, as will Nafly. Looks to regroup with the team, but again, we have two, armored, two unarmored players left up for Renegades. This is just another issue to take. Luckily, USP is going to be more so aiming for headshots, but still aim punch is an issue, even with the nerf. Mm. So Renegades, they have to group up. They're a man down. They've got to go into a site together, and B will be where their eyes settle. There's yep. only one man sits here. I think it's kind of dangerous for Cloud9 to run a solo B in this kind of situation when they're in a 2v, uh, when they're in a 4v3. Uh, Still, so he should be able to get a kill on the cross to site because there's not going to be a smoke to stop him from spotting this. Oh, yeah. actually, they, they do put the smoke oh, there I instead like of that. sidewalk. I love yeah. that. That's clever. Now Renegades can go. They need to get the plant down, at least guarantee them the early money. And already pushed up quite far. It's going to be JKS, the only armored player up. Bomb only just going down. That smoke allowing it to go down the lane side. And Shui going to look to move in. There's the kill. Now it's all onto Nifty. A 1v3 needed. Not even going to get close. Stewie cleans up. And it's actually rushed with a massive 3k in that round to f uh, pick it up for Cloud9. Yeah. They take seven. Yeah, and imagine Renegades are going to save here and buy third. They've been favoring taking more conservative economic decisions in the early rounds. I don't expect them to like do some type of crazy heavy force up that some teams will do. So this should be an easy round for Cloud9 coming up to, to kind of start closing the gap. But Renegades, again, will have that option to buy. They also could just go for another fast interplay and try to get a second bomb play and get even more funds into their opening buy. Something a lot of teams like to do as well. But Cloud9 may have a read on that and may look to kind of make sure they kind of have a couple players up close. They had bought a couple MP9s. The perfect position for those MP9s would be on lower ramp to stop them from rushing down and getting an inner bomb plant. We will see, though. Fast into Pop Dog. This is an area that, well, as I held quite effectively in the previous half, Tarek going to look to do the same. And this time it's not up against as much. It's running against just show pistols. Going to look to walk into this B bomb site. Nice nade. Does a lot of damage from Cloud9. Again, shouldn't make a huge difference because the issue is Cloud9 are playing aggressive up towards B, so they can easily stop this bomb plant regardless. So the nade shouldn't make a huge amount of a change. As you can see, it's just a mow down. Skadoodle finds three. Stewie finds two. Only one up for Renegades. Yep. Nothing too special. Yeah, the round played exactly how we thought it would, right? Like, you know that Renegades is probably looking for a second bomb plant for more money. Enter's the best way to do that. Cloud9 knows that. They're going to play it close and try to deny you from doing so, and they succeed. Uh, so now we sit at a situation where things are starting to even out. Uh, Renegades is a team, just like Mirage, actually, where you juxtapose these two teams from each other. Cloud9 much more prone to being aggro. Renegades much more prone to being very well balanced, right? You're going to see a lot of default. You're going to see a lot of aggressive executes mixed in. The thing is, Cloud9 has so much firepower that contests against. Stewie's probably one of the best inner players in the world. Definitely the best in North America next to Stana's Law. So you're going to have a hard time managing him. And then there's so much guns out there at Outer as well that can go blazing. As I don't looking to play up close here at T-Con. Oh, they chase. They don't allow him to escape. And you still are going to finish it off through the edge. Tarek still plays close, though. So they've got to worry about him. There's a lot of CTs here. Luckily, all the kills are flying through. Tarek does respond. It's actually Stewie, sorry, who grabs a kill and drops a bomb. But Tarek's not done either. As he finds one, it's down into a two-on-two. -two from a great situation to Renegades to something that will fall apart. Luckily, at least Stewie bails out his teammate by dropping Nifty in the spawn. Now that leaves you still alone. This has not turned out to be a great situation for Renegades. When they found the first opening kills, it was Tarek and Stewie that have turned the tide of battle. However, they don't know he's still here. They think he's rotated, and as a result, they have too. 
maybe read a little bit too much into this if you're Cloud9. I think it's more about just making sure they stick together no matter what they do. They want to make sure they face in two versus one. Even if you allow the bomb plant, you're trying to give yourself the best chance to win the round and tie this game up. So I like that the fact that they're sticking oh, together. Yeah. This is yeah. clever. As he still is also probably wondering what the hell is up. He's looking mm -hmm. all around. He's like, where are these guys? Like, there should surely be someone still here. Now he's going to finally go for the plant. But it's given time for them to get into ladder room and be there pretty quickly to work together. Is yeah. he still even going to expect it? He's not glancing in the right direction. Tarek catches the timing. And C9, take the round. They'll tie this thing right back up 9-all. Hey, you're right. It's a very clever rap actually stick sticking together if you're Cloud9 there. Because either, you know, the first option he's actually rotated to be and then you're in the right site. Or the other option, you've rotated all the way down ladder and you flank him like that. Yep. So... Yeah, no, no, not too bad of a setup for Cloud9, given the odds. And again, Tarek was low, so it was dangerous for them to split up and go to separate sites because that just allows you still a two 1v1s, which is never fun, if you're Cloud9 at least. There's always a chance for that clutch to be found. So money, okay for Renegades, they get bomb, but that's going to be really all that's working in their favor is they have to throw in pistols. Cloud9 pull up a double AWP into this CT half, bringing it in early again. This is something they showed a lot of Mirage and something that we expect them to show it on a far more AWP heavy map being trained. So. This is going to be obviously not as effective up against pistols, which Renegades are going to use to try and take close range battles, especially with the smokes and utility yep. they have, but still effective in the long run. Yeah, again, there's just a lot of heavy hitters on C9, and some of these guys are some of the best on the CT positions on train, particularly Stewie that enter. So I think that Renegades do have their hands full, but they're certainly going to give it their all here as they've played a great tournament and they're contesting well on train up until this point. Looks like they're going to go for that inner explode. Stewie's going to give it to him, but he has an incendiary to maybe do some damage. As he sees these smokes start pouring in, I'm sure he is going to think about countering, but he thinks better of it, just kind of oh. holds, and he's just waiting for his team to rotate. Yeah, good deep lane smoke again for Renegades. The nice Stewie, any kind of presence. He'll still find the kill, but it allows for the open bomb plant for Renegades. As Azza, he begins to push on up. Skadoodle going to carry on with the AWP, but this flank is pivotal, and Nifty's there as well. They both grab a kill, and that's guns taken as well. Nifty's still in position, but Skadoodle's low as he climbs up the ladder. They're none the wiser. Nifty, two kills. We needed him to step up, and he finally has, but look at the bomb. It's not planted for them, and Tarek could stick it. He fakes it, and they start to wrap, but he doesn't get a single chance. JKS cleans up the round, and Renegades, they win an eco. Yeah, really well done, just swarming with those pistols, and they did the correct thing. You have CZs, you want close-range fights. You need to push that smoke at Connector. You need to get in their face. I thought Stewie had a good read on it. You saw him spam the smoke for the first yeah. kill, so I, I feel like he had good situational awareness, but maybe just not expecting there to be, you know, two guys pushing the smoke right afterwards and just, you know, really taking a big risk. So well done by Renegades making the most of those CZs and the most of the situation, and now they have Cloud not on the back foot. Two M4s, a scout, a couple of upgraded pistols is all that C9 will have to work within this round as Renegades looking to see if they can extend that lead. Remember, this is an elimination map for them. They lost out on the first of Mirage in a pretty big fashion. If we're honest, very convincing from C9. So Renegades, they want, they want to see Cobblestone. They want to see this go all three. And honestly, I do too because it's been such a, a good tournament. I'd love to see it go all the way, really. C9 fans probably don't. Probably, I just want this one <laughs> just, over with. But, just win this, you yeah. Know, I'm no. sure C9 themselves also would love that. I mean, even if we had to cobble, that's kind of dangerous territory as well. C9 have proven to be very good. Well, Renegades are good at that map. C9, very strong earlier mm -hmm. versus Liquid. But that's a story for another time as we're still here in train and Cloud9 looking to try and equal up the scoreline. They've got a lot of presence on A, and that's exactly where Renegades are walking into. Skadoodle close, and Automatic just digs across the board. He finds the first, and Tarek follows up with the scout. Cloud9 low by, but it doesn't seem to hold them back in any way, shape, or form. Kills coming in for Renegades, but a little bit later. Luckily, Nifty draws it back, but look at the health left on Renegades. Two players very tagged up, bombed down. Well, they have the option to pick it up here. Cloud9 have both players in the site, and with this smoke wearing out, and Pop Dog Stewie might even opt to push on through it. If he does, he can just strike death into Renegades. There's a kill from Automatic. Nifty quickly pushes on up, and here's where Stewie flanks, but he gives away his position, and he doesn't benefit from it. Now Nifty's aware. It's a game of aim as the bomb goes down. Stewie can catch a leg, and uh, Cloud9, sorry, up to 10 rounds on a. Oh, not an eco, but a, a bit of a weak buy. That's the thing about C9, though, man, is like they yeah. can wield those budget weapons so well. They had that firepower automatic with that Deagle in particular, as time and time again shown you how dangerous he can be with the pocket op there. So it's Cloud9 time things right back up. But it's actually crazy to think how many rounds like that C9 have won overall. We saw at least two rounds in the first half of the six they won yeah. that were off of like crazy things like that. And now they've just done another one here on the CT side to tie things right back up. So. 
being crafty in low buy situations has helped out C9 big time here on train. And they're impactful as well. Look at the money on Renegades. It's, it's forcing them down to two pistols on their own side. And, and while they're obviously still effective, it's, it's definitely more favorable for Cloud9 to pick up these rounds because it limits Renegades when they go for those buys. Either way, triple UMP could be worse, but definitely not favorable or too favorable for Cloud9. That damage will certainly make the job easier as Azza, he just gets sprayed. Rush cleans it up as well. And Renegades, a man down already, need to turn the tide of battle. They're actually going to swap guns up, I think, because Rush only has 9 yep. HP and he has an M4. So, yeah, just give the, uh, give the better weapon to the man with the health. That's automatic. As Renegades start to move their way up Ivy, this is a three-pronged attack on A, but these other two players are very delayed. Still, JKS sits outside of the B halls, and with Automatic with an elevated position, he might be able to do this. Tag with the Deagle does find damage, and Automatic put down to 20. That nade cleans it up. Usillo just jumps right into it. Unfortunate timing. Luckily, Nifty trades, but still, Renegade's in a really awkward spot given the other player's position. I feel like he was jumping to avoid the grenade, but then it banks yeah. off the wall, and it lands underneath his feet, so unfortunate for him as now Cloudon had that man advantage, oh. and he's been spotted. Skadoodle knows what's up. He can call it, and he can get the flank in. Yeah, he's going to be able to strike from behind. Nifty dead, but luckily Renegades have walked into B. And with that rotation coming through, or Stewie will move back in. Still, Renegades have the chance to take their way onto the bomb site. No smoke on the lane this time, and that allows Stewie to roam free. And that's why they've been using this utility, because he's just so effective in that position. As you said, one of the best inner bomb site players in North America. JKS has a lot to do and no chances to do it. It's Cloud9 to 11. They've taken a lead. They actually haven't had a lead since they were up 3-2 from round five. It's been all Renegades, but now it is Cloud9 here at the stretch when it matters most, when the trophy is inches away. They do come out ahead of Renegades for now, but Renegades, what do they do here? They don't have that much money, so likely making a low investment in this round. Well, I don't even think any investment's worth it, right? They're on about 2,800, and they only have one round loss bonus. They shouldn't be putting any money in. Maybe a flashbang, right? If they want to buy yeah. it next round, it depends. If they want to go for a buy next round where they'll have mm -hmm. 2,800 plus 19, so they'll have, you know, around 5K, they can get rifles in, no warp, or, you know, yep. a glass cannon, they should fully eco this. Or, alternatively, they go for a light investment here, light investment next round, and they take another round to buy. But that just allows Cloud9 to get to 13. Yeah, I think in this situation where the scoreboard is, you probably do just fully go eco. with option A. Yeah. Maybe you get some P250s. They're very cheap. Um, you could go Deagle on the armor as well. That also doesn't cost you that much. Um, and there you do see as it does get the Deagle and a couple P250s out and you still low in math. So they are heating towards that first call. Which should give Cloud9 an easier time finding a 12th round because Renegades haven't been able to find ways to win these types of rounds. Cloud9 no. usually manage these very well. As opposed to Renegades, we've had a bit of trouble in at least three rounds this game. They do get ladder room control pretty easily, though. So, I mean, I guess that's nice. But I think that's intentional. Cloud9 doesn't want them to get swarmed in close range against pistols. They want to sit back and take sights. Yeah, they know what Renegades can and will show into this round. They can just take it at a range, as you say, automatic doing exactly that as is dropped. And he's actually pushed up into main. He's wrapped all the way through Ivy. That's a crazy position to be in, given the weapons are up against. And Renegades are going to hear all of this. Either way, JKS walks out towards B or considers it. Cloud9 molly him off. And Renegades look to reconvene down towards Pop Dog. They've already taken control with a minute on the clock and no utility left. They may as well just make a desperation play and try and take this site. But look at the rotation from Cloud9. With this push up from Automatic, they pre rotated players down towards B. But it's wrong. Luckily, Rush is right and he finds three kills. Make it four. Massive shutdown on the anti eco. Yeah, they were trying to see if they couldn't swarm Zeke here and do something a little bit tricky, but Rush is holding the angle too wise to it with the AK, a very good CT player. I think that's one of the strengths Rush brings to this team. You know, I think he's definitely had to make some tough adjustments on terrorist sides because he's so used to being an entry, and a lot of time he has to play more uh, peripheral roles. But on CT side, he can just be such a great defender. And there, that was certainly a nice little lineup of spray frags to ensure that nothing crazy happened on the save of Renegades, but now they're back to full buying. Nifty has the AWP as well. So they probably will slow down and give him time to look for something with this op. No op from Cloud9 in response, just rifles. So they're probably gonna, you know, hold more passive angles, not give Nifty a chance to find an opening, I'd imagine. You're not gonna see anybody really peek down Ivy, and it's only gonna be Jiggle peeks up close just to get information from their other riflers here on C9. Very slow, though, for Renegades. 
And I like it at least. Just change up the pace. I'd like to see... Oh, okay. <laughs> Good shot from this day, I guess. I'd like to see maybe, you know, throw in these slow rounds, but I'd like to just see one of those really fast executes that, that, that they can show. Just burst out to the bomb site, yeah. go really quick towards outer, and uh, and try and take control early on into the round. The thing round. is, it's so hard to do fast outer when Cloud9 has the money to just, like, chain Molly, smoke it yeah. or, or molly it. So you have a hard time spilling out a T-Con for a fast outer play that way. Also, again, very hard to take ladder room control. You could, like, really that double jump down thing is one of the, the best ways to do it, actually, these days. So it can be hard to go fast outer and low econ. As this time, they have the opening pick thanks to Nifty's op. They were patient. They got what they wanted. Now in the late round, they're going to gather up and use their numbers just to swarm inner. But Ska's here to assist Stewie. They have a bit of a crossfire going on from under ladder. So... Could be hard to deal with. We'll see. Yeah, and Deep Smokes as well. We haven't seen Scar take this position before, so Renegade won't expect it. Molly does force him out of position, but it doesn't matter because Dewey's there and two as well. As Renegades are now just limited to JKS, he fires off, but it's not enough. Tarek cleans, and Cloud9, another round on the board. They only extend their lead. It looked good for Renegades, but it's starting to taper away, and look at Stewie just it's playing so with the crowd. It's so easy is what he's telling oh, them. Oh, so easy for Stewie. Massive round for him, though. Yeah, he's definitely having himself a game, having himself a tournament. Really, all these guys have played well, but Stewie certainly seems to be the guy who's been at the forefront a lot of the time, as well as Tarek and, and company. So he has himself with 14 rounds in his sights, based on the fact that Renegades, again, are forced to be conservative. And on a Mac looking to hunt here as he pushes out Ivy. He's taking a little bit of heat, but he's still holding on right now. Another one, Cloud9 again take the man advantage, not that they needed any assistance into this. Now Fly pushes out, but look at that aggression from Tarek. How is that not punished? We may have AZR wrap, but at the end of the day, it doesn't even <laughs> matter, because Skadoodle! The Guardian Angel from up what? above has every single angle covered, and the crowd's getting hyped because they know that the America's favorite team for a lot of these guys is perhaps just a couple away from locking up that 50 grand and locking up that trophy and adding another title to the collection of this five right next to that DreamHack Denver first place finish. But we'll see. Renegades, I do want to say this, if this does wind up being the end for them at this tournament, they've played a hell of a tournament. Let, yeah. Let's be honest. They've, they've had a hell of a couple of months. Great work in Korea. Great work in Shanghai. They've definitely, since NAF has come on board, really started to pick things up, separate themselves from the middle of the pack of the rest of the region and become one of the better teams competing in North America. And we will see, do they still have some fight left in them? They're not too far off the heels of Cloud9, but we haven't seen a lot of success in this second half. Just one round so far for Renegades from T. Yeah, this has been very, very weak. And we were hoping for a little bit more. If they were going to show it at all, this is going to be the perfect po uh, perfect point because they want Cloud. They don't want to allow Cloud9 to grab championship point, grab overtime. So Renegades slow up Ivy again. Three players on the outer side, two down towards Tcon. It's Skadoodle up on the AWP on this side of the map, but look at the aggression. Cloud9 have thrown in two towards B upper, so this is just giving them more information. It can allow for more pressure on the outside of A because they know that Renegades haven't taken B Hall's control, so they're not going to commit towards B just yet. And if they do, you know, we've got two players here to stop it. Cloud9 can be more aware and use utility far more effectively as now they know that Renegades are likely setting up for this A play. Smoke deep in Ivy, Skadoodle on the other side, and three Renegades players for him to deal with. They're yet to commit, they play it slow and I'll start to push in, but so will the main players. Automatic hears every single footstep and Skadoodle. He eats a bullet. You still owe a double kill on the entry. Tarek looks to try and follow up as he's now caught in the pop dog, going to try and burst himself out onto the site. And there's nothing as Azza follows up. Stewie will be quick in contention as he's rotated down through the pop from that aggressive B play. But the only kills coming in are too late for Cloud9. Renegades keep themselves in this for yet another round. Yeah, again, Renegades demonstrating to you guys that they have a deep playbook. They have adjustments they can make. They can pull out all the stops. I mean, they're not limited to just default in a couple of cool little executes, they can, you know, make reads with Kassad and Nifty and, and, and dig deep and, and pull out something new. Unfortunately for them on Mirage, nothing new they pulled out ever really worked. But here, they get a nice little change of pace at Outer and they steal around away from C9 and they can start battling back perhaps. But Double Op is now out in play for C9 with Unimatic and Skadoodle. 
This is like one of the few mats on a Matic is the second opera. A lot of the time it's either Tarek yeah. or Stewie, but due to the positions they play on CT side train, it makes more sense for it to be Tim. Oh. And he hits a, a ringer right there on you, Stillo, through the flash and all. He gets the opening pick, and he gets Cloud9 that much closer to championship point. A mere pixel, but he wins the lottery. Cloud9. A man advantage on a round that they need. If they find it, it's another reset onto Renegades, and they've been doing that before already, as we said. Only one round prior to the previous Renegades have on this T side, but looking to keep things in contention. They don't want to get the reset. As Azza pulls it back, he's taken again another important kill and another important round. They'll continue to push, and into the site they go. We've got Automatic still here. That secondary AWP you talk about, and striking for a second, and a third Automatic. He's not stopping. He's raining down death from below, at least, as he looks up for more. Nafly closes it, and Renegades again down to the wire, but again they hold strong, and finally wrapping two in a row on this T side. It's, it's taken a while, but they're here. They are here, and the thing is, Cloud9 are actually starting to run out of money, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think they had a couple of players that still had some cash, but there was definitely a couple who were quite low on funds, so this could be opening up the door just a bit, just a crack. Just You can see a little bit of light down the dark hallway if you're Renegades right now that perhaps you might be able to start making your way back into this one. And indeed, Cloud9 do have to just pull out a scout on the Tarek. We see a CZ for Stewie. Uh, and I'm actually has a fair amount of cash, but he's not going to be doing a lot of spending with it. Just a deagle, CZ on Skadoodle. But they've, they've won a couple of these rounds already on train, so I don't want to count them out all the way. And Renegades no. has to be thinking to themselves that, hey, we can't drop this round. We've done this too many times on train already. We really need this one. We can't let Cloud9 get map put off the back of something gimmicky like this. Because the crazy thing is, right, Renegades, assuming they take this, are up to 13. Then Cloud9 throw in the bye. Renegades take that again. They're up to 14. And then Cloud9 have no money. So Renegades, if they just win one Antico, one bye, they may be able to just grab themselves map point off the back of Cloud9 having limited economy. Yes, they'll have loss bonus almost maxed, but they won't have have it fully maxed. Yep. So Renegades right now, I mean, they're in a really good spot just given the money of Cloud9, and they should definitely take advantage of this. Oh, Nifty taking a little bit of damage there as he tried to go for the pick with the AWP down the 65. So Don't. Cloud9 maybe showing their <laughs> teeth a little bit here as Tarek dices around with Ivy. He doesn't find the kill, but no harm, no foul. No one from C9 has taken damage just yet as they hold some tricky angles here in Outer. Oh, Tarek, he might catch them, and he does. Nades oh! out, Tarek, two kills, just scouting them in the face. And Cloud9, we've said they won this round before. They might be able to do it again. Tarek in for a third, and the tag, it may just be enough, because Renegades are losing men left and right. The cavalry falling of the Aussies as they look to try and pull things back. It's the two North Americans with JKS. He snuck his way out of Maine, and while there's no armor on Cloud9, they need kills. Nafly, and thus not JKS, okay, finds that kill. <laughs> Okay. And Renegades looking to continue this barrel of assault. JKS, another frag, but it's close from the CZ. And again, trades is all that Cloud9 need. Two kills from Skadoodle. And Nafly alone, he may find two of his own, but he's four HP left. And Skadoodle, he has the bomb under control. He has the AWP. Naf may be low, but it's coming down to the wire, as this entire game has been. It's all about the decision for Skadoodle. Does he commit with the bomb? Does he fall back passive? He doesn't know where Naf is wrapping from. He's instead pushing close. The flick needed and is missed. Nafly keeps oh, it alive oh, for oh. Renegades. But what a round from Cloud9. By the skin of his teeth, Naf wins that round. He had four health. Scott Doodle almost helped put that one away. Tarek with those two scout frags. You can't even believe he got the second kill there. It's just, it's so unforgivable almost. But I guess it can be now that Renegades still do take the round thanks to Naf. Oh my goodness, oh. that was, uh, oh, that kept you on the edge of your seat, didn't it? It's 13 14 now, though. Double op still for Cloud9. They're still around ahead as well. They're putting Skadoodle in heaven very early. That's going to be a little bit new. That's not something that Renegades has really seen yet. So it could certainly be the curveball that C9 might need. As Stewie has that second op in the internet, that's also another adjustment C9 have made to their defense going into this. So definitely trying to keep Renegades guessing what they're going to throw at them defensively. Oh, careful, JKS. We've not seen any kills there, there so far, but this would be a horrible round for that to happen. Warbang coming in from Cloud9 from the bomb site. And again, we've not really seen too much presence in Pop Dog here from the CT side. As I had a lot of it, but Tarek's only occasionally gone towards his position, so not going to, or maybe will surprise these guys. Automatic even swapping the AWP back over, so Stewie on that. Sorry, Skadoodle on that. Stewie had it anyway down towards B. There's going to be rotations in. Cloud9 now with four players on this A bomb site. Renegades looking to perform similarly. Stewie still sits towards this bomb site. 
on the inner side with the AWP. Everyone else from Cloud9 going to be ready and waiting as Renegades begin to show face. Pushing up through the lane. And again, two coming in from main. It's going to be the split. The issue is the time. Renegades are very, very slow on this round, and it may come back to bite them. Skadoodle poised and ready. He sees the arm. He sees the leg, but he misses a shot as he looks in for more. They're not peeking the angle, and he's just not getting any opportunity. Renegades finding frags, but so is Skadoodle. He misses the second shot, and Nafly pulls it back. Cloud9 only down to two, and Renegades still have control of the round, but yet to get that bomb plant in. 15 seconds left. Stewie shouldn't be able to stop it, but he may be able to catch JKS. <gasps> that position from the bomb plant. He misses the flick, and with just eight seconds left the bomb goes down here for the T side so Renegade's in a good spot but Nafly's tagged and they know it as York finds a leg Cloud9 begin to move back in JKS is going to be left with the pressure and while we have seen Naf do it before with low HP this time it's going to look even more dicey Slow in for Cloud9, but they don't have kit, so they need to speed up. Tarek climbing up the ladder. He's going to catch off Naf, and the low HP allows him to get the shot off on the ladder with the inaccuracy. They can jump on the bomb, but they need to stick it because time is low. And JKS oh. needs to push back in. There's the kill. Tarek at Stewie has to stick the bomb. He simply doesn't have time. And JKS, he may just be able to play with the enemy at least, keeping this one close. And he's going to be able to find it for Renegades. The kill can come through, but not the round. The Aussies find 14, and it's going all the way to 30 dust. It's staying so tense, though. Renegades aren't getting these rounds easy by any stretch of the imagination. We've had these last couple of rounds come down to 1v1 type situations and Renegades are just barely scraping them together. So it can't feel comfortable if you're Renegades right now because you're not winning these rounds confidently or comfortably rather. It's come down to the wire, but Cloud9 are also running out of time at this point and money to be 100% honest. They are starting to approach max loss well, bonus. This is what we said a couple of rounds ago, right? If Renegades pull it back and take it to 14-14, Cloud9 on a pivotal round don't have money and yep. they've got to make that decision. Do we go for the eco and play for OT or do we go for the early investment that could come back to bite them if Renegades win it once again? Absolutely, that is definitely going to be a little bit of a debate they're going to have to have with their coach Phelan on what they think is the most appropriate, what's their best chance to keep the 2-0 dream alive. Cloud9 do decide to invest. They get an op in Stewie's hands. He's got armor. A scout in the hands of Tarek. They have some pistols out there as well. A couple yeah. CCs of Deagle and Imatic. They've, they've made either these rounds very close with these weapons or they've won them. So I can't even really blame them. Stewie's going to be looking to make a play with that op. What he does best, being a playmaker. But Renegades, they're doing really well here to close the gap. They've won the last four rounds in a row. They're keeping their tournament hopes alive. And that third map dream real. But can they go all the way? That's going to be the question we have to answer in these next couple of rounds. As Rush, oh. he's, he's playing with fire. <laughs> playing with his life, maybe. Got to be careful here in the corner. Cloud9 aren't going to be pushing forward any further than they need to. Skadoodle's close down on B. We've got automatic playing passive towards a spawn. And there's the push from Rush. And he rushes to his death. Nafly, good shot. As Renegades take the man advantage for free. Again, they've been, as you said, very difficult on these rounds, so it's nice to see them kicking things off to a good start. But again, it's not over yet. We've still got especially that AWP in play that we look to. Bomb retrieve for Renegades. Ah, uh, Sinan has the wrong read here. They're yeah. thinking it's inner. They're rotating a oh, third player. They even have... That. Yeah, Stewie has an op still in connector, though. Oh, okay, bomb, wait bomb. a second. Yeah. No, it's going down towards B. This uh -oh. is looking good. Oh, man. This could get real bad. Especially with the way that they could crossfire it in inner. With CZs and Adig. Uh-oh, Dust. Uh-oh, we may just have it. 29th round and here. And Stewie's in. right there to rotate with the op, yeah. too. This is ideal for Cloud9 based they, on what they've got. A perfect setup, right? Absolutely perfect setup. No armor for Skadoodle, but it may just happen. Smoke in. Stewie misses the shot. Skadoodle got to make up for it, and he gets at least one. Stewie drops as he tries to climb up, and it's all falling apart. Renegades take it near flawlessly. And look at Kassad in the background. He couldn't be happier. They'd struggle with these rounds prior, but they won't struggle here. Yeah, they basically played that round on hard, though, because they went right into the stack, but they still brute forced their way through. A lot hinged on whether or not Stu was going to find something with that AWP, but he got caught in the air and was never really able to even crack off a shot. And so now, Renegades, they have map point. They have a chance to win this map here and now and force Cobblestone. Cloud9 have to just kind of rummage together anything they can to see if they can't hope for an overtime. And the crazy part about this, right, is we look to Renegade's T side. They lost the first three off the back of the pistol and the conversions. They took the first buy, straight up reset. And then for the next five rounds, Cloud9 just didn't give anything to Renegade's. And it took nine rounds of the half for Renegade's to actually start to wrap this comeback together. And now it's not even a comeback. Now they're in the lead. It's Cloud9, their really last ditch buy. buy. Yeah, well, that's off the back of the previous mm -hmm. eco. They have rifles in, they have an AWP, and they have good utility and kits. This is a, a chance for them to make it to OT but it's their last chance. They've given up a lot of rounds to come here. 
Let's see what Scott can do with the big green. Spots a player, doesn't take the shot, waiting for the crossback, still doesn't take it. He doesn't want to go for something that is a little bit out of his range. He wants just to kind of hold the steady angle. Automatic throwing some pressure down here at Ivy. It's going to be a triple Ivy set up again from Renegades. So again, making a little bit of adjustment. Nifty and Skadoodle are just kind of toying with each other right now. Just a game of chicken going on. And Nifty does eventually back down. He'll actually come to Ivy as well. They're going to go for Ivy. I know this is something I've seen Renegades do a couple of times. So definitely part of their playbook. And they're going to bring it out now in what could be one of the most important rounds of this whole tournament for them. And with automatic there, plus rush on top of the train, this is a good setup for Cloud9. They might have a good defense. Left side smoke out, so Rush is going to be in a good position as well. And automatic, there's a gap in the smoke. He'll push through it. He can get two, and so can Rush. They mow down Renegades, and we're headed to overtime here in the second map of this best of three. Yeah, this Renegades get run through the blender at Ivy. The gap in the smoke certainly didn't help, and Rush's position was perfect for any type of Ivy push into the outer yard. It's not a bad idea to go heavy Ivy when you're up against Ops and you want to close distance, but the Op wasn't even a factor there for the seat title. So it's rifles up close, just cross-firing. And C9 do put this to OT. There you go. We're, we're, we're going maybe not the full distance of three maps, but we're certainly going all and more here on train. Again, just to refresh your memories on the rule set we're using for this tournament, it is MR316K, so the economy not much of a factor in over time. It's more about just throwing all you got every single round and trying to put your best foot forward as each round passes. It's a race to 19, 18-18 split. And I got that wrong. It is MR10K. Yeah. Okay. It's MR10K. My uh, mistake. MR3 so 10K. economy definitely a factor, <laughs> particularly for CT sides. Change everything I just said. Everything I said is, is incorrect. What, this whole map? I hope not. I no. really hope not. But, but everything I said for those last you know, 30 seconds about OT is wrong. Still a race to 19, still MR3, but it is 10K starting money. Okay, double all pin. Risky for Cloud9 again, as you say. Harder to maintain for the CT side. So if they lose the first opener, this is where it starts to fall apart because these two players are down to, what, $1,900 or mm -hmm. three, 3K-ish. You know, it's, it's weak. So Cloud9 need to be very, very careful, but they got the previous one. So if they can work off the back of that, this could be good. One player down on B, Stewie. Who else would you want playing solo man on this site? And he's not playing just for bait as well. He's committing to the peak. So the flash will force him out of position, allowing Renegades to potentially take control that they don't exploit. It's forcing Stewie back to a more passive angle. That just allows for a quicker rotation towards A. And the drop into drop. Nafly finds the kill, and Renegades just dive back out of the, uh, the ladder room as well. They've taken the man advantage. They've gained more map control. And they've left Cloud9 with four. Yeah, now they can line up their smokes to just go for an outer exec, knowing they have the man advantage to leverage. But Skadoodle trying to still play up close with this op, play the edge of the T-Con train to look to see if he can't deliver a blow before he backs down. As JKS does take ladder in the process, so they're definitely setting up to pull out outer, and Scott goes down without anything. Rush and so does well. Rush. Yeah, it's just getting mowed down, out of control here for Renegades. The money is going to be the biggest issue moving forward unless Stewie can keep himself alive or even do damage. There's one. Nifty dead and bombed down. Stewie goes back towards the raft as he climbs up the ladder. But the window not broken yet. They might not expect it, and he finds two. Oh, no, Stewie, don't tell me Renegades are going to throw this one away as he looks for a little bit more. Renegades begin to wrap. And yeah, the long wrap, there's no way he can win this, surely. Look at the position of Nafla. He comes all the way back round through the ladder. So two players in the best post plant possible. Stewie looks for more, but they know he's not on the bomb. They're just going to bait with him, play with their food. And Stewie, not going to be able to get it. They peak with the timing. And Renegades, they take 16. They lose a couple of players, but the Orp is held on. Yeah, they trade so efficiently there. Really well done by Renegades. They're Getting their act together right away here in overtime. Just getting the opening pick and capitalizing on it. Just a really well-disciplined, crisp, everyone on the same page. Execute there on the outer bomb site. As while well, Nifty has been quiet, the Aussies have not been. And Naf has also been stepping up to the plate here. And now they are one round ahead of C9 once more. Cloud9 obviously able still to buy here. But if this doesn't work out, the last round of the half is going to be really dodgy for them. So... It would do them a lot to just to make sure you get this one because if not, there's a great chance we're gonna just 3-0 the half, get to 18, and look to push this to cobble. But we'll have to see. Cloud9 playing forward on Ivy. The one op on Skadoodle is playing at Ivy actually with one other player. So that's where they want to focus up. 
Renegade's just sneaking out up a look at this. They've taken control. And Stewie, he may hear the footsteps, but he doesn't know just yet. It's actually Tarek to find the first kill. Renegade's still very deep in the site, but they haven't cleared out Stewie. He can come around the backside, and while well, the bomb will still go down, they won't expect this position. So he finds one more, looking for a second, and there it is. Everyone dead on Renegade. So Cloud9 not letting this one be swept under the rug as they look to find their first in overtime. That being the second of the round, it's all on the Ustillo, but the flank from Skadoodle is enough. So Cloud9, they equal up, and that's important, because in oh, overtime, absolutely. in 10K, if one team gets two rounds in a row, especially if they're on the T side, the money is just wrecked for the third. Absolutely. So equaling up means both teams will be able to buy now. It's actually crazy how that played. I mean, obviously Cloud9 get early information because they push down Ivy and don't see anything, so they get to rotate in a little bit more freely, but like you said, they crept out upper, and they could have easily blindsided someone rotating through Connector, or even, you know, caught Stewie off guard, but Stewie kind of gets a read on it, starts hearing the footsteps, able to stay around Pop Dog, and actually comes through and makes a big individual play so if you're really you think oh great we got the creep three players out up and we got a lot of open space here this should be great for us but Stewie's still a thorn in their side lurking in the shadows and pulls out the round tying this thing right back up so keeps it as close as possible as we go into the last round of this first half of OT what do renegades want to do here they're spreading the map and playing default for now Tarek playing up close on ladder Slow here again for Renegades. We've not really seen many of these fast executes. Obviously, it's harder in overtime when you know the enemy team has money, but oh, look, two CTs and two Ts, and no trades needed as Tarek finds them both. Copying Azza here as he takes both players and the Pop Dog. Now, Renegades are going to be off to a struggling start in, in this third round of overtime, but again, Cloud9 continue to barrel down damage. You still owe down to 12. And Nifty, he has to make up for this one. He's been struggling this game. He's only on 13 kills this map, whereas Naf's on 26, with, along with you, still as well. So Nifty, well, he's been a stunner this entire event. It's the grand final where he slows down, and this cannot happen. This is where he needs to step up if they want to pull themselves out of the dirt for this final round of the first half. Rush close and Renegades out as they be begin to push onto the bomb site. Nifty joining them, and you still owe slow and low as he makes his way up through. The Orc finally strikes a Nifty. He needs to spot more players, or there's someone up in the heaven. And that's going to be automatic. Already tagged. They haven't worked it out just yet. 30 seconds left. Nifty, he's not given anything. They're really not being able to find a pick, but there's only Cloud9 players in the site. Finally, they'll see another one. Nifty, a second as well. Could there be, this be the round where Nifty steps up finally? It definitely should be. As he wraps around again, he might find the third. And there, no, there it isn't. There it is. Finally takes down Rush, but Ustillo's now alone. That missed shot could have cost Renegades the round because the bomb's dropped in the open and Cloud9 come in for the cleanup. And there it is. Cloud9 do come out around ahead as we transition to the second half of overtime here at the I Buy Power of Masters Grand Finals. Now, it is worth noting that C9 have never really had to rely on their T side train to win an offline map on this. Again, a lot yeah. of the time it's been big CT sides that have carried them through against both Big and Renegades. At DreamHack Denver, for example, where they got their work done in the first half on CT, they didn't have to do a whole lot to close. Now they are going to be asked to really put their, their best foot forward on T side. They obviously struggle in regulation. Both teams did. So what adjustments do Cloud9 make to try to find what they need to end this series in two? Again, we know they like to do the fast pace executes on outer. That's like one of their trademarks going way back even to previous iterations of Cloud9. They had the firepower to definitely make that type of action work, but with Renegades having so much utility, it can be very hard to just swarm out T-Connector against a bunch of incendiaries and flashes and, and, and nade stacks. And again, we know how hard it can be to get ladder room control as terrorists these days. You have to commit a lot of utility to it or just maybe sacrifice a guy doing the head boost down. So it, it can be a nightmare sometimes, but we'll have to see what Cloud9 look to go for as all of the, all the guesswork can come to a close now because the round is underway. And one AWP up for either side. Renegade's not running that double AWP on that fly alongside Nifty. We've got aggression down Ivy for this CT side as they throw that solo AWP down in position. This is something the Renegades were doing as well in regulation time. Although it didn't have too much effect. It was actually a retake round where they had to you know, just straight up save because this AWP was so deep and Cloud9 hit B. So Renegades were on the wrong side of the map. But Nafly kicking things off. Tarek doesn't even need the boost. He falls down alone and automatic as well. They just hit the A site really quickly. And Renegades are not expecting this kind of pace. It's the kind of thing these Aussies have not shown. But the rap from Ustillo could work as he drops a bomb. Bad communication. Automatic doesn't turn around. And the rap from JKS as well. It's well timed. Tarek's dead. And it's into a 1v1. The bombs drop to Molly as well. Allows... JKS just to potentially wrap, but he stays inside the pop. 
and continues to throw in flashes. Finally, the bomb can be retrieved from Stewie as he slows it down to go towards a site. Utility up for both teams and time as well. It's a game of wits. Does JKS stick? Does he wrap? Stewie's just going to get the bomb down so he doesn't have to think about where he can die from. Do it early. Do it quick. Force Renegades to send this final player out onto the site. And Stewie gets into his post plant on top of the train. Still oh, nice. this is so close. And JKS, he's none the wiser. I think he might have seen the head. No, he hasn't. He has no idea. And Stewie's steep in Olaf as well. JKS is so damn close. He might just see him on the edge. And he does, but he misses a shot. Stewie gets a second chance at life. And he's going to be able to at least run away with this one as long as he doesn't overface in this one. JKS now giving away his position. Stewie can just play the time. And frankly, there's not much of his left. JKS is forced to make a play. And Stewie, he's going to come out on top. It's 18 rounds here to the North American side. And they may be able to close this out here and now. Yeah, it's, it comes down the true Cloud9 fashion, leveraging their firepower, swarming and trading, overwhelming their opponents to get into the site. But it did come down to a clutch. Renegades did fight tooth and nail in that situation. They didn't let Cloud9 have it easy. They forced Dewey to win a very difficult one versus one against JKS, but he did get the job done. And now they are at championship point right now. Stewie 2K leading the charge. See the stats there. They're pretty brilliant. And Cloud9 just one round away from hoisting the trophy here at I by Power Masters. Renegades need to win out to force another overtime just for a shot at a third map. And after a ridiculous comeback as well from Renegades to actually take this to OT after yeah. Cloud9 were you looking so good. You gotta give Renegades good. their props no matter what yeah. happens here. Impressive. But more so for Cloud9 here. Not only a map up, but also two rounds in overtime. And a third. That would simply seal the deal. $50,000 on the line for first place, whereas only 25k for second and Cloud9, they want the big bucks here. As they set up for a slow round, changing the pace, not going for that quick style that we saw in the previous. Renegades, the double up could be something to throw a spanner in the works, catch out Cloud9, but will it have effect? We've got, you still owe down Ivy this time, no AWP in this position, and that's a shame because Cloud9 are actually putting pressure here, and you still are going to realize the er error of his ways as well. Yeah, to be honest, heavy Ivy against double op is actually really good. So as long as Cloud9 doesn't fumble a duel, they should actually be able to capitalize on ops looking to take long sight lines down ladder and T-Con and getting in their face or forcing them to take close range battles up here on green train where you still is, but he still has a good angle on top. There's no crossfire in the back halls, though. Both orbs on B is going to mean if this site is taken by Cloud9, they can't retake. Renegades will surely lose this map, but there's 20 seconds left. Cloud9 need the bomb down, and they need it down now. Still CTs all alive, but the flank from Automatic drops you still owe. JKS might be able to change this one, but no! Skadoodle hits a shot, and as a only man to trade, but it's not enough. It's a double orb up for Renegades, and Skadoodle, he'll make it work. Nifty dead as well, and that's it. Cloud9, ladies and gentlemen, will be your victors here at the I by Power Masters 2017. What a ridiculous performance in that final.